For example six, I wanted to go just like example five with one of the more extreme problems. Example five had all the decimals. Here's one that has fractions everywhere. The thing that students need to remember is not to lose your head. You understand the process. It never changes. It's not like I'm trying to trick you here. I'm just trying to prepare you for some of the things that you can see. When I'm looking at these two fractions, I'm not going to waste time trying to figure out what the common denominator is. I'm just going to take both parts. In other words, I'm going to multiply this by 3 and 1 half, that's the first denominator, and by 3 fourths. As I distribute this, when it goes to the first fraction, just like we did in all the other problems, that's going to cancel out. You're going to have a part of your common denominator that cancels out. In other words, the 3 and 1 half cancels out. I'm going to bring this 3 fourths down, and that numerator, like always, comes straight down unchanged. And then when I move to the second fraction, we're going to do the same thing. We'll see that the 3 fourths portion of our common denominator drops out. So I'm left with 3 and 1 half times 4 and 1 third x plus 1 and 1 third. Not the prettiest problem in the world, but again, when we're using those calculators, this should not be anything that's threatening. You can distribute this stuff and simply type it into your calculator. So I have a calculator here. I'm going to type in a 3, I hit that ABC button, 4, and then I go times 2, ABC, 2, ABC, 3, and that gives me a result of 2. So this came out pretty nice, it was just 2x. And then for the second distribution, I'm going to go 3, ABC, 4, times 1, ABC, 2, and I get 3 eighths equal. I just start all over. I'm going to go 3 ABC1 ABC2 times 4 ABC1 ABC3 and I get 15 and a sixth. Again, you want to use some common sense here. When I take 3 times 4, I know I get 12. With the fractional parts on there, I understand it's going to get a little bit larger. So 15 and 1 6 is not anything that really is setting off any alarms. It seems reasonable is what I'm trying to say. Likewise here, 3 times 1, I know it's going to be an answer that's bigger than 3. So I go 3 ABC 1 ABC 2 times 1 ABC 1 ABC 3, boom, I get 4 and 2 thirds. You do want to watch your signs there, make sure you don't make any sign mistakes. The other thing that you may note, when I'm writing equations, a lot of times I use the horizontal line for my fractions so I don't make any mistakes. I encourage you to do the same thing. For this problem, I have to decide who I want to move. I'm going to move the smaller of my variables. So is 15 and 1 6 larger or smaller than 2x? It's larger, so that means that I want to move the 2x over. If I'm moving the 2x over here, this will be designated for variables. That means that the 4 and 2 thirds has to move over to the left-hand side. Write the original term first, negative 3 eighths. Migrating term comes over. It's positive here, so it comes over as a negative 4 and 2 thirds. Equaling 15 and 1 sixth x. The 2x comes over as a minus 2x. Want to simplify and see where that takes me. Again, I'm going to let the calculator do all the work here. So I've got this negative 3 eighths and I want to subtract 4 and 2 thirds. Uh, calculator tells me that's negative 5 and 1 24th. Equal, I don't need a calculator for this common sense. 15 take away 2 is 13, so it would be 13 and 1 sixth x. Now after years of teaching, I finally give, give in to this concept of using the calculator, using the technology. So if I'm going to use the technology, I'm just going to divide to us who are used to traditional mathematics, this looks so strange. You're going to divide by this mixed number. 
but mathematically it's correct and the technology will allow you to do it. So I'm just going to put this in my calculator. I type in 5 and 1 24th, make it negative, and I say divided by 13 ABC 1 ABC 6, boom. And I get this crazy answer. It says negative 121 over 316. With your calculators, they should reduce them automatically. I believe this one is reduced. And so don't be afraid to get crazy answers. That's kind of my point here is if we're using the technology and we're following through with the mechanics of algebra, we started with this, we had just a proportion, one big old fraction equaling one big old fraction. Even though it was ugly, we saw that it was a fraction equaling a fraction. So we multiplied by the common denominator, we distribute that across, got an equation that had tons of fractions in it. We didn't lose our head. We went ahead and distributed, allowed the technology, allowed the calculator to do the work for us. We came up with a little bit simpler equation, moved our variables like we always would, simplified it down, and then divided by the coefficient, the number in front of the variable. Even though to me that's strange, most of you probably don't have a problem with it. I notice when I go up and down the rows, you all do it this way, so let's do it that way. And we get this really strange answer. And my whole point of that is you need to start getting more comfortable with these strange answers. You know, nobody said that the answer had to come out to be two-thirds or negative one and one-half. We have to become accustomed to these more strange answers. We'll see that on this test.